European scientists say they've discovered a correlation between high levels of air pollution and COVID-19 fatalities. The study found that the death rate in the most industrialised regions of northern Italy is more than twice as high than the rest of the country. Well, with more on what this might mean, I'm joined now by researcher Dario Caro from the University of Arthus in Copenhagen. Thank you very much for your time. Do you have any idea what are the theories behind this potential link that says if you live in a place that's got much higher air pollution, there's a higher fatality rate from COVID-19? Uh, hi, yes. Uh, actually, we found that living in a, a higher level of uh, air pollution uh, may lead to a number of complications for patients uh, with uh, COVID-19. Uh, in the regions simply because their bodies uh, have already uh, been weakened uh, by the accumulated exposure to air pollution when they contact uh, the disease. Uh, what are those? I'm assuming that's to do with your, your breathing, your lungs. You know, can you talk us through that? Uh, yeah, actually, the the mechanism is about the cytokine. So we uh, we record uh, an inflammation of the cytokine, uh, which is the cause of the. We can say it's the first step uh, uh, to to die from coronavirus. And uh, we found that people living in a polluted area, uh, they have uh, uh, a high level of uh, cytokine uh, also in uh, healthy people. Of course, one of the sort of effects of everyone going into lockdown and not travelling is that air pollution, in particularly these very highly polluted areas, has started to decline. It's a trend we've been talking about over the last few weeks. What kind of strategies could cities put in place to then better protect residents when the lockdowns are lifted from the damaging effects of air pollution? Uh, oh, OK, uh, we need to distinguish between uh, uh, greenhouse gases and uh, atmospheric pollution. So in this case, we are talking about uh, atmospheric pollution and uh, uh, traditional uh, pollutants. So what we need to do is to shift toward a more sustainable approach of production and consumption. So and reducing the, the impact of, uh, of industries. Uh, that's something we already knew before, but now with the virus, uh, it has been uh, uh, remarked. So, for example, Milan is looking at a strategy to move a lot of their roads to pedestrianised ones or encourage people to cycle. Would that have much of an impact if lots of cities decided to sort of implement strategies like that? Uh, we can, uh, I mean, like uh, implementing a more sustainable transport uh, sector uh, as well as uh, shifting to renewable energy uh, instead of the status quo and traditional um, industries production. So uh, there is several ways we, we, knew, uh, we know very well. Uh, so it, it needs to be implemented. Uh, and I think... Uh, uh, this is the moment because uh, with the uh, with, um, industry sector set to zero right now uh, in the, uh, with the lockdown, so we have uh, a, a, a huge opportunity to restart in a more sustainable way. And it would be a pity if we don't uh, do that uh, right now. Dario, thank you very much for speaking to us. Dario Caro from the University of Arthus in Copenhagen.